So what is on your mind and what is it you would like to talk today? Well, of course, I do not hate vintage bikes. Actually, quite the opposite. I love them. I love restoring them. I love riding them. My favorite bike to ride is my Colnago Arabesque. I much prefer it over my 2020 BMC Team Machine, even with its disc brakes and electronic shifting and super light carbon everything. But that being said, there are certain things about vintage bikes which I really, really do not care for and could easily do without. I know you're going to say, well, Louis, that means that you are not a true vintage bike purist. And you might be correct. But to be more specific, there are five things which I do not care for when it comes to vintage bikes. And if I go in ascending order, meaning from the least dislike to the most dislike, in number five, I would put vintage gearing. Now, when I say vintage gearing, I mean dinner plate size 5242 in the front and a five block 1424 in the rear. If any of you have ever tried to go on a long ride with some 10,000 feet of ascent with those ratios, I am sure that you were cursing vintage gearing like a drunken sailor. I know I was. And not only that, but I will say nothing as to what it did to your knees. And again, you might say, well, Louis, that means that you're not macho enough to ride a true vintage bike. And it could be. But personally, I prefer a bruised ego over blown out knees. In fourth place, I put center pull brakes. I love center pull brakes. They really have a unique vintage look, but I find them tiring on long rides. I always get hand cramps. But the number one issue with me when it comes to center pull brakes is really their so-so stopping power. Have you ever tried going down a long, steep downhill with center pull brakes? They are downright scary. You have to look way ahead and start braking way sooner than you would with other brakes. For me, the big negative with center pull brakes is that I just don't trust them. I don't trust them to bring me to a quick stop if and whenever I need it. In third position, we really need to have a talk about 27 inch wheels. I really only have one issue with 27 inch wheel, but it is a very, very big issue for me. You see, no matter how many times I've tried, no matter if it's on my Peugeot PB12, or if it's on my girlfriend Peugeot Mix, or if it's on any bike I ever worked on that's equipped with 27 inch wheels, I have never, ever, ever been able to install a tire on a 27 inch wheel and got it to sit properly on my first attempt. Never, not once. And it's the most uncomfortable thing in the world. It gives you this very, wobbly, bumpy ride, you, you go like this constantly. And I know how to fix a tire that doesn't sit properly, but it's such a royal pain. So what is it? Well, what the heck is that all about? What is it with 27 inch wheels anyway? In second position of my most dislike, I put toe clips. In all honesty, I have nothing positive to say about toe clips. I always fumble when I try to put them on. You know, you have to flip them upward, half a rotation, and then just as you're about to put your foot in there, they fight you right back and flip right back down. On top of that, once you have engaged them, you constantly have to tighten those straps. And as if that was not enough, if you're wearing nice leather, vintage cycling shoes, you know, they will damage the tip of your shoes and chew at the leather. I cannot stand toe clips. Give me clipless. I love clipless. And now 
the number one in my list of most hated things about vintage bikes. Vintage saddle. You know, I like to watch old footage of the Tour de France. Jacques Anquetil, Eddie Merckx, Bernard Hino, Greg LeMond, and all those great riders. But when I see that they used to ride on those saddles, ooh, it makes me shiver. They are the most uncomfortable saddle I ever put my posterior on. They are literally and figuratively royal pain in the rear end. Everything I dislike about vintage bike, which I've mentioned up till now, I really can live with without too much difficulty, except for vintage saddles. No way. They're not saddles. They are torture instruments. So a lot of the purists out there are going to tell me, well, Louis, there are so many things that you dislike about vintage bicycle. Why don't you just stick with modern bikes and be done with the whole vintage bikes thing? And I can't disagree more. If you take my Colnago Arabes, for example, what I wanted was a classic steel frame and fork bicycle, but equipped just the way I want. And that meant a modern saddle, 700 C wheels, clipless paddles, and a modern group set with mountain climbing friendly gearing and powerful brakes, which was very important to me. And I do not believe that the combination of those modern gear with a classic steel frame and fork a quill stem, a metal bar, and alloy wheels really deter from the great riding qualities and attribute of a vintage bike. Quite the opposite, actually. I think that all those improvements really make all the great riding quality of vintage bike come alive and shine. To me, a vintage bike is four must-have things and four absolutely cannot have things. In the must-have column, I put steel frame and fork, of course. I put alloy wheels, I put quill stem, and I put a metal bar. In the absolutely cannot have column, I put any carbon material, disc brakes, electronic, and deep rims. Outside of that, in my book, everything is okay. You see, I think that riding vintage bikes should not be all about going back in time. It's also about enjoying a very unique and different riding feel that cannot be replicated by modern bikes, but can be enhanced with some modern equipment. So has spoken the psychologist, and until our next session, I fare thee well. <laughs>